Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a really quick one just because today is going to be my June TBR. I have, I think, seven books to show you guys that I hope to read in the month of June. I also got a new camera, um, so if the settings look a little weird, sorry, um, but I finally got a new camera after breaking mine. So, super excited about that. These are the two books I'm currently reading, so I We'll definitely be getting them done in June. And that's Empire of Storms and then Tower of Dawn. I'm currently reading Throne of Glass. I wanted to finish it in May and I probably could have during Memorial Weekend. I decided to spend the weekend with my friends so I didn't, I wasn't really focusing on reading but this series has been so good. I'm actually vlogging myself reading the entire series so there should be a reading vlog um, as long as everything goes okay but yeah. These are the first two. And then of course when I finish those, I am going to be reading the last and final book of the series and that is Kingdom of Ash. This book is nearly a thousand pages so I'm super excited. I love this series so much and yeah, super excited. I usually don't read the backs of things but I know this video is going to be very short so I'm going to read all of the descriptions for all of them. Besides Throne of Glass, I'm not going to read the backs because I feel like since these are the last three books, it can spoil things. It's a fantasy with a subplot of romance. It's kind of in a realm with magic and kings and queens and we're following this assassin named Selena. Um, and a lot unfolds within, I mean, I've only read five of the books so far, like completely, um, but it is just one of my favorites. I, I feel like this is unpopular opinion, but I feel like I'm enjoying reading these more than I enjoyed Akatar. No, that is a scary thing to say. Akatar is so good, but that one is more romance with the subplot of fantasy. I've just been sucked into the world of Throne of Glass and I've been enjoying it so much like bringing my books to work and reading during my lunch hour and it's just been so good and it's making me want to read uh, the Crescent City series which I probably will very shortly um, but yeah it's so good and I love our main character and the romance is so good and oh, all the characters are amazing all I'm gonna say is Munin is amazing. Non fiction pick for this month is a collection of stories I don't actually know what this would be considered. I don't really know what type of book this is considered but it's called Three Women. It's kind of like um, the stories of three different women. Obviously a journalist wrote this and it's just talking about the sex lives, um, hormonal lives, dating lives, all that type of stuff um, within Three Women. Obviously did the title. Um, I got this a few months ago in February I think so I'm excited to read it and knock it off my TBR. The description of this, it is very long so I don't know if I'm going to read all of it but it says desire as we've never seen it before. A river a riveting true story about the sex lives of three real American women based on nearly a decade of reporting. I'm gonna read it because it goes all the way on here and the back flap but basically yeah this journalist is just like following these three women over a decade. I didn't realize it was that long but I am super excited to read it um, and yeah that's all for this one. And then for my Colleen Hoover pick of the month I have Regretting You. Um, I recently read Heartbones and I thought that was a book where everyone was like it's not really a romance it's more about a like familial relationship and I got it wrong. Regretting You is the one that people are like it's not as much as a romance as it is like a family relationship book. So I am excited to read this one. I recently like Alexa Ray just posted a new vlog of her reading this book. She said she knew it was different just like I'm saying um, but it still shocked her and it wasn't as predictable as she had thought it was going to be. So super excited to read this one and it's and of course I'll let you guys know like what I think about it. So the back of this one says, how do you pick up the pieces without the glue holding everything together? Morgan Grant and her 16 year old daughter Clara would like nothing more than to be nothing alike. Morgan is determined to prevent her daughter from making the same mistakes she did by getting pregnant and married way too young. Morgan put her own dreams on hold. Clara doesn't want to follow in her mother's footsteps. The predictable mother doesn't have a spontaneous bone in her body. With warring personalities and conflicting goals, Morgan and Clara find it increasingly difficult to coexist. The only person who can bring peace to the household is Chris, Morgan's husband, Clara's father, and the family anchor. But that peace is shattered when Chris is involved in a tragic and questionable accident. The heartbreaking and long-lasting consequences will reach far beyond just Morgan and Clara. While struggling to rebuild everything that crashed around them, Morgan finds comfort in the last person she expects to, and Claire turns to the one boy she's been forbidden to see. 
With each passing day, new secrets, resentment, and misunderstandings make mother and daughter fall further apart. So far apart, it might be impossible for them to ever fall back together. So that sounds super good. And of course, like, the covers always mean something, so I'm sure there's like a really destructive letter in here, which I'm excited to see. Um, but yeah, that's my coho. I feel like I haven't read a thriller mystery book in a while, so I decided to add The Last Mrs. Parrish to my uh, TBR. My friend Libby actually read this last summer and she really enjoyed it. And so um, because she read it in the summer, I am just associating it with summer. I don't really know if it's summery. I, I will say it looks like she's on the water, so summer. Uh, but yeah, I'm super excited to read this. Reese's Book Club picks are always such good books. Um, but yeah, super excited about that. Back of this one says, Amber Patterson is fed up. She's tired of being a nobody, a plain, invisible woman who blends into the background. She deserves more. A life of money and power like one blonde haired blue-eyed goddess Daphne and Parrish takes for granted. Mm -hmm. To everyone in the exclusive town of Bishop's Harbor, Connecticut, Daphne and a socialite and philanthropist philanthropist and her real estate mogul husband Jackson are a couple straight out of a fairy tale blessed with two lovely young daughters Amber's envy could eat her alive if she didn't have a plan Amber uses Daphne's compassion to insin insinuate herself into the family's life the first step is a meticulous scheme to undermine her before long Amber is Daphne's closest confidant traveling to Europe with the Parrish family and growing closer to Jackson but a skeleton from Amber's past may ruin everything that she has worked towards and if it is discovered, her well-laid plan may fall to pieces. This sounds super good. And the last book I have on my TBR, it is going to be my fun, like one of my romances, and that is The Summer of Broken Rules. I've heard a lot of good things about it. It's actually a lot thicker than like these books typically are, but I am super excited about this one and to see what it's about. It's all fun and games until someone loses their heart. When Meredith Fox lost her sister Claire 18 months ago, she shut everyone out, but this summer she's determined to join the world again. The annual family vacation to Martha's Vineyard seems like the perfect place to reconnect. Her entire extended family is gathering for a big summer wedding, and although Meredith is dateless and after being unexpectedly dumped, she's excited to participate in the traditional Fox family game of Assassin that will take place during the week of wedding festivities. Claire always loved the game, and Meredith is determined to honor her legacy. But when Meredith forms an alliance with a cute groomsman, she finds herself getting distracted. Meredith tries to focus on the game and win it for her sister, but she can't help falling for him. And as the week progresses, she realizes she realizes she's not only at risk of losing the game, but also her heart. Wow, so all those books sound super good. I'm excited to have a, another great reading month. My months this year have just been so exciting, so fun. This is going to be the end of my June TBR. Let me know what you guys are planning on reading this month. I always love getting new recommendations. I'm trying to be on a book buying ban, but it's not going well. That is it for this video. I will see you guys very soon. Peace and love, bye guys.